Good morning. Welcome to Calvary Chapel Inland Devo 30. Pastor Ruben, thank you for joining us today. We stream live on Facebook every Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays here at 9 a.m. And if you're in the neighborhood, love to have you come on by. Morning, Patty. Morning, Diana. Oops, what did I just do? Oh, I hate this Facebook. It just doesn't sound like you when you're on here. <laughs> there we go. Sorry about that. Got interrupted with the highs and hellos. <laughs> uh, today we're in the book of Galatians and we'll be in chapter 3. Let's go ahead and pray. Gracious Father, we thank you for bringing us here this morning. We gather in your holy name to just have some fellowship in your word and be instructed, Father, for today. May you just lead me in the Holy Spirit, Father, and maybe touch someone that's out there, Father. Someone that just needs encouragement and strength, Father. Maybe just needs confirmation that they're in the right track and they're following Jesus. Maybe they just need uh, confirmation and decision that they're making, Lord, and, and you'll <clears throat> be able to use this, Father, for your glory. So we're praying, Lord, the Holy Spirit would just lead and we'd be um, listening and ready to hear what God has to say, just as he does in the book of Revelation quite often. He who has an ear, let him hear. And we all have ears, Lord, so May we hear your spirit whisper in our ears this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, so let's open up our Bibles. Grab a pen, a pen or paper and highlighter, and let's get into it. Chapter 3. Uh, verse 21 of chapter 2 says, I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness comes through law, then Christ died in vain. So Paul left with that thought there pertaining to grace and faith in that we are saved by grace through faith and not of works. I'm sorry, uh, grace and works and not of works. And so it is the grace of God and not, not the law that gives us the righteousness of God. So being true, he says, O foolish Galatians, chapter 3, verse 1, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified. So again, remember there are uh, Jewish religious people who are coming to the church and trying to get them to follow the Moses law of the Old Testament. And Paul is correcting them along with Peter, who was another apostle. And here he calls them foolish Galatians. Isn't that interesting that in the Gospels, Jesus is called no man fool, and then here's Paul <laughs> calling them fools. Um, I don't believe it's the same word that Jesus used that Paul is saying here. He's saying here more or less like, why aren't you thinking, you know, Galatians? It's not right for you to think this way. Who has bewitched you? You know, who has gotten into your mindset and so forth? Why haven't you studied the Word of God? Why haven't you known these things already to be true? Why would you allow someone else to uh, lead you astray? You know, and everyone knows, what Jesus Christ has done. You know, there are historical documents that talk about the death of Jesus Christ being crucified uh, by historians. Um, and also talk about the fact that these believers believe that he resurrected. And there were many incidences where um, they talk about Jesus being resurrected and, and men seeing them. These are historical documents that are out there by various uh, writers. And so everyone knew that Jesus was crucified. They knew what he did. And he goes on, this only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the Holy Spirit by works of the law or by hearing of faith? Good question. Do we receive the Holy Spirit by the works of the law or do we receive him by faith? And obviously the, the answer to that, at least for me, is by faith, right? Not by works. We can't earn the Holy Spirit. That's impossible. Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit? Are you now being made perfect by the flesh? Have you suffered so many things in vain? And that means worthlessness, if indeed it, <coughs> it was in vain. <coughs> now, if it's not by works, then it has to be by faith that we receive it. Uh, you can't keep the Ten Commandments. If you were under the law, you would be required to keep the Ten Commandments, right? Honor God, keep holy the Sabbath day, um, don't take his name in vain, you know, honor your father and mother, do not steal, do not lie, you know, all of these 
these commandments, not covet your neighbor's wife, not covet your neighbor's goods, and, and so forth. These are all commandments, and you have to keep them all in order to receive the Holy Spirit or to receive salvation. Now, obviously, we can't. We can't even keep the first one. Let's just start with loving God with all your heart. How many of us has really loved God with all our hearts? We haven't. Now, let's take this to the New Testament, because there are some commands that God has given to us, too. Like in 1 John, you know, I command you to love one another. Well, how are we doing with that? Mm -hmm. Have we loved each other the way that we should love each other? In the New Testament, under His grace? No, not really. How about the commandment of love your enemy? Mm -hmm. You know, well, how do we love our enemy? Well, He tells you. If they're thirsty, give them water. If they're hungry, give them food. So it's just not by word, but also by action. I used to have a an enemy when I was working for Southern California Edison. Um, <clears throat> he was a, a boss that had grew up in in the company along with myself, probably several years, probably about ten years before I I hired on. <clears throat> and he, I could see him raising himself up, and he became a manager actually of the whole company for for a while. And then they realized that he was incompetent. Uh, Robinson's Rules of Order. Uh, you arise to the point of incompetency. There's a point where all of a sudden you don't know what you're doing and you shouldn't be there. So he ended up getting demoted to just a, a field supervisor. I mean, this guy was pure evil. Hated Christianity. Hated people. And if he didn't like you, he was after you and he tried to find things on you and constantly harassing you. And so me and him had it all against each other. I was a union steward, he was a supervisor, and if you know anything about being a union, in the union and stewards, you're on the same plane as supervisors when you're dealing with contractual things. So whenever we got into contractual things, I'm on the same plane as he is. So he has no authority over me, I have none over him, but we can go at it, you know? And so there were many times we went at it. <clears throat> but the Lord always impressed upon me <clears throat> was to love him, to love him. And so he would come in the morning uh, hey guys, how's everyone going? And he had a problem pronouncing R's, so it wasn't Reuben, it was Wuben. Hey Wuben, how you doing, Wuben? You know, and, and so we'd make fun of it. It's, it's bad on us, <laughs> but, you know, so it was Wuben. Have you been to the Wibble, Wuben? <laughs> you know, could I have some water? You know, so, so he got his R's for water rudder. <laughs> uh, but the Lord impressed upon me, love him, so... Uh, he would like, hey, you guys need some, some uh, water, you know? And I, hey, let me get it. And so I'd go and get it and get everybody water. And then I'd give him one. He goes, and he'd go to pay. I go, no, I got it, I got it. And I would pay. So I would literally, by at my actions, you know, as soon as he comes, you want a soda? I'll go get him a soda, buy him a soda, and give him a soda. Or a candy bar, because we'd fill our candy bar with nuts and candies and things like this. And so that's how you love your enemies. Did I really love him in my heart? No. No, I didn't. That's as close as I could get to it. And so even in the New Testament under grace, I, I haven't even kept those commandments. So how much more do we need grace and faith, through faith? A lot more. So even now we need to live by faith because it's impossible for us to live by works or even to keep God's commandments. Now, it's wonderful and we should encourage each other to keep, to keep those commandments and do the best we can, but we fail. And if we're honest with ourselves, we realize we fail miserably. Even pastors fail miserably, though they have to keep that persona. Well, we have to be that representative. We have to let them see that they're that if we can do it, they can do it. But the reality is, we can't do it either. You know, we need Jesus just as much as anybody else. That's the reality. I'm sorry, and I might be stepping on toes at this point, but that's okay. So, therefore, he says in verse five, "He who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you, does he do it?" by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. And then he gives us an example from the Old Testament. Just as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. So Abraham believed that God, believed God, which said that I'm going to multiply your seed. And so he just believed him by faith, though he didn't see it. And in fact, Abraham died and still didn't see it. <clears throat> Yet he still believed him and didn't come until later and won't come even till later once the tribulation is done. And then we truly see the, the seeds of Abraham. But yet he believed it by faith, not by works. Therefore, know, verse 7, that only those who are of faith are sons of Abraham. So if we are to be children of Abraham and children of God, we need to be children of faith. Everything has to be by faith. Everything that we do by faith. Uh, I'll be there tomorrow. 
by faith, I'm believing that I'll be there tomorrow because we don't know what tomorrow brings. By faith, I'm going to believe that you're leading me one way or direct another. As long as you're coming to God and asking for wisdom and then reading and waiting upon the Lord, he's going to give it to you. You might not feel like that's the right answer at the time, but make it anyway. And you, he knows that you were going to make it. But that's what's so strange. So, so by faith, you just know God knows. And he's going to bless it. But we must live by faith. We're here by faith right now. We're here by faith. I'm doing this by faith. Is anyone going to listen to this? Well, according to the likes on there and the views, not too many. Compared to last year where I was getting 200 to 300, now they're getting to know me. So either they're tuning me off because they already know how I think and how I share the scriptures. And so they're tuning me off now. But now I'm getting 50, 50 likes and so forth. So it's dropped you know, more than half. <clears throat> Maybe they don't like what I'm saying. Well, they're not liking what I say, but they're not liking what the Bible says. That's really the, the matter of the fact. But I'm doing this by faith, just believing that there's someone that's going to be touched out there. Amen. And obviously, uh, there has been from time to time as they share with me. Once in a while, I'll run into somebody that I don't even know. A couple of years ago, we went to a, a fundraiser for a ministry, and... Um, I got to talk to one of the guys that was leading it and came down. He goes, you're Reuben, right? Reuben, Pastor Reuben Solis of Calvary Chapel. Uh, yeah, he goes, I listen to you all the time. Like, I've never seen your name on, on there at all. He goes, yeah, but I listen. So he's heard me. He goes, and you've encouraged me from time to time. So I know it happens. Yeah. So it's just by faith. And the scriptures, verse 8, and the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the nations by faith, preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand, saying... In you, all the nations shall be blessed. So then those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. So you're blessed when you believe by faith because God knows you are trusting in him and it's not in your own works and in your own understanding of things, right? Four, verse 10, as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who does not continue in all things which are written in the book of the law, to do them. But that no one is justified by the law in the sight of God is evident, for the just shall live by faith. Uh, uh, Habakkuk 2.4 he quotes there. Uh, Romans also says this, the just shall live by faith. This is how we should live. If you are going to live by the law, I'm a good person. You know, most people say, I know God. I don't go to church, <clears throat> I don't read his Bible, I don't pray, but once in a while I give to a homeless person a couple of dollars. They're depending on their works. So if you're gonna depend on your work now, then that means you have to keep every other law also. Otherwise you're a curse. And that's the problem with keeping the law or justifying yourself because you're a good person. I live under the golden rule. A lot of Catholics will say this. How do you live your life? Under the golden rule. What's the golden rule? Well, just love others as best you can. That's not a golden rule. How, how are you doing with that? Oh, not too good. <laughs> not too good. So if you're going to live by the golden rule, by a law, by a rule, by a regulation, you're going to fail. Can't even do it in the New Testament. You can receive Jesus Christ and still try to live by the law. You're not going to do it. Amen. So as Christians, we live by faith. Yes. We must live by faith. The jest, those who are saved, who are born again, who are new creatures in Christ Jesus, they're to live by faith. That's it. Yet the law is not a faith, but the man who does them shall live by them. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. So Christ took the punishment of breaking the law for us. He hung on the cross. So here I am, I'm in the Old Testament, and I'm, I'm walking along, and all of a sudden I'm doing some work, you know, in my garden or my vineyard and whatever, and something breaks like a shovel or a pick, and all of a sudden I, so I use God's name in vain. <clears throat> and I'm a person that lives by the law. Well, God says, you just broke the law. You will be punished for that. That's how that works. I'm under that law. So what is my punishment? Well, this is what your punishment will be under the law. Now, if here I am in modern days, and I'm working in my backyard. I'm cutting my grass, and all of a sudden my lawnmower blows up, you know, and I use God's name in vain, but I'm living by faith. I'm like, oops, I'm sorry, Lord. I'm sorry. He says, oh, you're forgiven. There's no, there's no curse there. 
There's no repercussions. Why? Because Christ already paid for it. And you're believing that Christ's death was enough to pay for your future sins. Past, present, and future. When Jesus said on the cross, it is complete, the tense was it past, present, and future sins. Complete. It's totally done. Now, to some of you, you might be going, oh, man. That means we can go around and just curse. and No, 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 no. That's what faith has works, right? And that's what James talks about. So if you live by faith, then you're going to do your best to keep the laws. But you know that you can't. So in those times that you can't, you just confess it and God forgives you. I know that doesn't sound right. I had a guy one time tell me, that doesn't make any sense. Because that guy that's in prison who, who, who raped all these girls or who molested these children, you know, all of a sudden they could just ask Jesus and they're forgiven. I go, yeah, if it's sincere from their heart and they're born again, yeah. That's how great God's great. Well, that's Amen. not fair. I go, well... You better you better think about that one because your very salvation and eternal security is at at risk here. And if you don't believe that, then you'll be spending eternity in hell. He says, well, I think I'm fine because I live by the golden rule. But those guys, I just can't believe that God would do that. No, he would if it's sincere in, in their hearts. And God would know that, wouldn't he? Yes. So he goes on that the blessings of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Brethren, I speak in the manner of men, though it is only a man's covenant, yet if it is confirmed, no one annuls or adds to it. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. Now notice it's seed, right? Notice that it says their seed, singular. So that is speaking of um, Jesus there, the promises that were made to them. In other places, you'll see that the word seed is actually in plural sense, which is speaking of us, that we're the seeds of Abraham. The physical a seed would be an Israelite, but also a spiritual seed, which would be Gentiles who were, who were grafted in. Now, to Abraham and his seed were the promise made. He does not say, and to seeds, as of many, but as of one, and to your seed, who is Christ. He explains that. And this I say, that the law, which was 430 years earlier, or years later, cannot annul the covenant that was confirmed before by God in Christ, that it should make the promise of no effect. For if the inheritance is of the law, it is no longer of promise, but God gave it, to Abraham by promise. What purpose then does the law serve? It was added because of transgression till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. And it was appointed through angels by the hands of a mediator. So what good is the law? And what is the law? Well, you remember before, before uh, Moses went up to Mount Sinai and received the law, before that, they had no written law. The law was verbal. And so God had told them what to do. You remember Cain and Abel? You know, you're not to kill your brother. I'm going to put a mark on your forehead because they were told murder is wrong. Now, they didn't get murdered. God, great. You see God's grace there. He didn't murder them, but he, he corrected him and then he disciplined him and so forth. But there was the law then with Abraham, with, I'm sorry, Adam and Eve. And then they passed it down to their generations and so forth. So they lived according to the law, but it was not written. It was, a, it was a law that was in, written in the hearts of man. They knew when they were stealing it was wrong, and God would correct them. But transgression continued, and you, we, by the time you get to Genesis 6, right, it's so bad that God's got to destroy the whole earth, except for Noah and his family. That's how bad it was. So he decided, then I need to write this down so they have something to see and read and sign the contract and know that what they're doing is wrong, and then I can really hold it against them. And that's why the law came in, to show them that they couldn't keep the law. So that's what he's talking about here. Uh, it came by angels and a mediator. Uh, now, verse 20, Now a mediator does not mediate for one only, but God is one. <clears throat> so that's interesting, God is one. And yet Jesus is God. The Holy Spirit is God. And so... You're not centered. Oh, I'm, not, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not centered. Myself. 
Hey, I am centered. <laughs> I'm centered in my, Christ Jesus. My sister Diane said, Pastor, you're not centered on the Tilt Spirit. your head a little bit like this, Diane. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's go back because this is, this is important now. Pay attention. <laughs> okay, so a mediator does not mediate for one only, but God is one. That's interesting. God is one. There's only one God. Isaiah says, there are no other gods, nor will there ever be other gods Amen. besides me. Uh, First John says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Not a God, like the Jehovah Witnesses put in their new little Bible that they've written, which is not in any of the manuscripts at all, that little article, the God, um, incorrectly done. They don't know their Greek, so that's incorrect. So we see one God, and we see the Word is God. And so if the Word became flesh and dwelt among us in verse 14, so it's speaking of Jesus being God. But there's only one God. Why are they both gods? No, there is one God. They're all God in, in essence and in spirit. They're God. Just The best way I can explain it, which is not a great way, but we're all human. We're all human, but we're female and male. and But we're human, Right? So that's the best way. They're God. Not that God is human, but he's beyond that, transcends that. <clears throat> and he's everywhere at any time. You can't see God, but yet they're all three God in that sense. So that's the best I could do. And I don't know if anyone can do any better than that. So he goes on and says, Is the law then against the promises of God? Certainly not. For if there had been a law given, <clears throat> which, could have been get, which could have given life, Truly righteousness would have been done by the law. But the scripture has conferred all under law, under sin, that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. <clears throat> but before faith came, we were kept under guard by the law, kept for the faith which would afterwards be revealed. Therefore, in other words, keep us in line, right? Because the law is there. We have stop signs, right? And kind of in the sense, the same sense. When you come to a four-way intersection, normally you should stop. If there was no stop sign there, let's say someone t broke it, tore it down, whatever. Normally, you would realize, I need to stop because there might be another car coming and we both collide. So there's a natural law that's written in our hearts that we know something's not right here. And so you would normally stop, even without stop sign, you at least slow down and yield and then look and then go. But we put stop signs there. Why? Because people don't do that. I don't know, in our area, and just saying this because it's the truth, in Mariloma, the old community, they can't read stop signs. They just go right by them and they don't care. And there are so many accidents in this area. I had a friend of mine coming to our church and he had the right of way to go straight. The other uh, side, they were supposed to stop. Well, they didn't stop and they hit him head on. And he ended up breaking some bones, never made it to church. Wow. And after that, he never came because he took it as a sign <laughs> that God didn't want him here. I mean, that's how we are, right? So it's, it's, it's kind of like that. But you see, stop signs are there for a reason to tell you to stop yep. because there might be someone coming. The law is there for a reason to tell you this is wrong. You shouldn't be doing it. So that's what it does. It reveals things. Therefore, the law was our tutor, verse 24, to bring us to Christ that we might be justified by faith. But after faith has come, we are no longer under a tutor. For you are all sons of God through faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. We're sons because of yes. faith, not because of works. Now, stop there just for like 30 seconds. Think about this for a second. If a person is, de is dependent upon their works, are they sons of God? No. Because he's saying you're all sons of God through faith. That's it. Not of works. So when you meet somebody that says, no, I know God. How, how do you know God? Well, I go, to, I go to church every Easter, you know, and well, do you ever give? No, no, but I try to be good. I try to be good. No, you're not. No, I know God by faith. And I've sat with him and didn't have to do a thing. And he spoke to me and I can speak to him and I sense him and I know I love him and I'm growing more and more in love with him because we have a personal relationship Amen. that's based upon faith and not my works at all. And I know my God, I know what he's like and he loves me and I love him and so forth. That person's living by faith and not by works. 
No, you are all sons of God through faith in Jesus Christ. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male or female. Female, you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and his heirs according to the promise. Why are we Abraham's seed? Because of we're living by faith. So we must live by faith. Here's our lesson for today and, and go away. Do everything by faith today. Just believe God has ordered your day, right? God numbers our steps. Yes. Amen. There's a way to a man. He makes out his plans. He lays out his directions, but it's the Lord who numbers his steps. A uh, good brother of mine, uh, Pastor Andreas, <laughs> he's probably listening right now because he says he listens a lot. Pastor Andreas, he called me the other day, or actually messaged me. He says, hey, bro, check this out. Check this out for me and let me know. And so I wrote him back, hey, man, I'm busy uh, studying right now, you know. And, and all of a sudden he writes back, hey, bro, Pastor Chuck always said, if someone needs help and you're studying, don't use that excuse. You help that person right there on the spot because it's directed by God, you know. And I'm like, oh, man. Well, he caught me there. I go, I don't remember Chuck saying that. <laughs> but I do remember him uh, living that, that life, being interrupted at, at those times. So, a great brother of mine, <clears throat> Andreas, he's out in Los Angeles, uh, uh, living way in L.A. So, um, but yeah, God directs our staff. He numbers them. And so we need to live by faith. And if something happens, maybe God has a reason for it to happen, right? Maybe it's a divine interruption, right? Mm -hmm. That God wants you to take Amen. some time with that person. So so live by faith today. Let's pray. <clears throat> Gracious Father, I thank you for all those who, who <clears throat> listened this morning. I pray, if anything, Lord, that they heard that. We just live by faith. Trust in God, and he'll do the rest. Bless them. I pray you encourage them. Uh, Father, walk with them and number their steps today, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. If you have a prayer request, please uh, post it and we'll pray for you. We're going to take time right now and, and pray for you all. God bless.